Hiya, Kelly Bear here. Um, today I'm with you for another one of those philosophical waffles type videos. Um, and as you'll see from the title, I want to talk about making meaning. Um, and I, there's a few things that sort of had me thinking about this over the last month or so. Um, a, a, a little while ago, maybe in December, I think it was, I listened to an episode of the Placebo Magic podcast. Yes, I am referencing a podcast yet again. <laughs> Um, the Placebo Magic podcast is, is really good. I haven't listened to all of the episodes, but I've listened to a few of them. And um, this one was about making meaning. Now, the um, the podcaster of this uh, podcast, <laughs> uh, Dermak, <laughs> I think that's in this, uh, like a, a magical name. Um, I don't think it's his real name. Uh, he um, comes at magic from an atheistic point of view. It's um, there's no um, uh, belief system that he sort of ascribes to. There's no religion that he ascribes to. He's a complete atheist, and so hence the title of the, the podcast being placebo magic because he comes at it from a very sort of psychological um, model point of view um which which is fair and which is valid of course um and he he talks about a number of really interesting topics uh, the one about frugal living or frugality or deep frugality was the first episode that i listened to last year and that was i highly recommend that one i really really enjoyed that one especially if you're doing a depth year but just generally i think it's really useful but this one that i was listening to um in december was about making meaning um and that had me thinking a lot about making meaning when it comes to being a witch and a diviner, someone who uses tarot and Lenormand and, um, you know, other various forms of divination, but also how we make meaning in our just every day to day life. Um, and then I got the um, Between the Worlds Oracle by Monica Badersky at the end of December. I think it was just before New Year's this this turned up for me and um this is all about um curio and charm casting and the whole system is based on um a number of curios from monica's personal collection that she has gathered over over the years and has ascribed her own meanings to um she by no means features every single item in her collection because there are hundreds of tchotchkes and charms and curios and bones and all sorts of things but you can see here we've got you know a quartz point for example um a wishbone a tulip shell so it's the sort of things you would imagine to see in a curio casting kit but obviously it's in card form and i've been really enjoying playing with this um at first i sort of really likened this to the um mildred Payne secret pocket oracle because you know it's small it's lots of like individual items but actually it definitely does feel different now that i've been working with it it feels more like whereas i can take cards out of the Mildred Payne secret pocket oracle and turn it into my own version of a Lenormand which I have done from time to time or use the whole deck uh, it reads generally more like a Lenormand it has there's a lot there's some more abstract things there's not just like items in those cards there's like people and thing like um, places like not places like house or factory or you know like there's it's not just items if that makes sense so this definitely does feel different now that I've been working with it and I love both of them for different reasons but it just i just find it really interesting the way that monica has ascribed meanings to each of these items that she's been working with um over the years it's just it's just really really it's just really cool um and then the 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 final thing that really had me thinking about meaning and and wanting to actually make a video about it and just sort of talk about it was um Saoirse soaring his channel um, I, I highly recommend if you haven't heard of her go check her out um, 
she did a video i mean she's spoken i think she's spoken about me meaning in her magic and in her practice before in her videos but she really sort of touched on it in one of her more recent videos um i will link the video down below and i will link the episode of the placebo magic podcast down below as well where she talks about layering meaning um, in her magic and in her practice. So those are all things that I wanted to talk about today. So the first thing I'm going to touch on is the first thing I mentioned, which was the Placebo Magic po podcast. So Dermak talks about um, the way that he ascribes meaning coming from a bottom up perspective rather than a top down because he's an atheist and or just doesn't have any sort of particular paradigm that he ascribes to prescribes to um he um where you know he was he talks about the idea of for example when he was in the church so he's speaking from his experience and how meaning came from the top down from god and then that sort of trickle it's a trickle down meaning when you look for meaning you ask like why has god sent this to me why has this happened god why has this you know from his experience and he 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 gave, gave a really good example description of it he said he just he thinks of it as like a mobile so god is the, the the hook or the the main part of the mobile and then there's all these little branches and all the little bits of meaning sort of hang off of that but he talks about as an atheist he comes at meaning from a from a bottom down so his meaning comes from him and then that sort of grows outward and i really liked that um he describes it as um an ecosystem of meaning that you know that's our own um and i was like that's really interesting not only if you are an atheist but if you are someone who practices magic like he does which is why he wanted to talk about making meaning in the first place um but as diviners right we 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 find meaning um in the tarot cards that we read for example, you know, one person looking at a certain card may come to a different conclusion looking at the same card from the same deck because they have their, not only do they have book learning, hopefully, from, from reading the tarot, but their own intuition. And then that's also going to be informed by their upbringing, the culture that they are surrounded by, um, their own world views, um, their experiences, all sorts of things are informed by that. And that's okay, right? Also, if you have book learning, you would have learned from different books to other people, for example. Even if you you get two people that have studied the same courses and the same books with the same tarot deck, you're still going to get different hits because we are all different people, or different associations, I mean, different meanings, because we are all different. And, and that's part of what I think is really interesting about divination. Um, and especially when it comes to things like casting lots, personalised gathered lots like you know like monica has done here monica like she's my mate like monica badersky has done here where she's over the years she's gathered and curated her own selection of charms and and curios and and and, and, and ascribed meaning to them so i just thought that was really cool so one of the things that dermak are, uh, suggests that you can do and he's talking to people as atheists but obviously it, it could be anyone could do this exercise he says to take a stack of index cards and to look at things that you encounter in daily life um so um preferably things that you encounter in daily life so it might be a traffic light it might be a bus it might be a, a, a crosswalk it might be it could be all sorts of things it could be um a pigeon you know whatever <laughs> uh something like litter um and he says to write that at the top of the card and then you want to write at least three words or three key meanings that you associate with that particular thing from your own from your own experience from your own meaning um but you he said you could also pull from like societal meanings you know for example if you've got a traffic light on a red that's going to mean stop right but he said that could also mean feelings of uh, being stuck of frustration that kind of thing um and 
he also talks about using um if you want to it doesn't have to be things in your real life that you come across but and i'll talk a little bit about why he says you want some things at least that are you come across in your day-to-day -day life because he also talks about pulling meaning from um the media that you consume or the things that you enjoy so whether that is books or films or tv shows or music um you can you can glean meaning from that and people do right so um he talks about being really into star wars sorry the light is going oh, bananas as always let me see if i turn that off turn it down a bit this just very unpredictable lighting here um but um, he talks about really loving Star Wars and how, you know, the way of the Jedi and um, he gleans meaning from that. And, um, you know, he could have a card with a lightsaber written at the top of it. And what does a lightsaber mean to him? And you can do the same thing. And he said that, you know, it doesn't matter if that wasn't the intention of the piece of art of the creator. It only matters what kind of meaning you glean from that. That's the beautiful thing about, you know, going to an art gallery and, and standing in front of a piece of art and sort of absorbing or absorbing it yourself whenever I encounter a piece of art for the first time I like to you know have my own reaction and feelings about it but I do also really enjoy then learning about the artist's um, thoughts or interpretation or meaning behind the piece as well because I think that can be really important and enlightening especially if I find that a piece is leaving me, me quite stumped um, and that's also why I really think it's important that if you've got um, a tarot or an oracle deck, for example, that has, especially with tarot, where someone is really deviating away from the um, traditional artwork of, like, say, the Smithway or the Marse, um, why have they done that? What are those particular symbols in there what are they for what do they mean it doesn't and you can still come to your own conclusions as well of course but i just find it really um useful and important for the artist or at least the author the writer working with the artist to um, reference those choices because otherwise i don't see the point you know so um yeah that's really interesting so I thought that was a fun thing that you could do. And he does say in the ch in the episode, the reason he says to um, put these all on cards rather than um, collate them all in like a, a correspondence chart is because you can shuffle them and use them like a tarot deck, um, which I think is really cool. Oh my God, it has gone from raining and really cloudy to this in the space of about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> just can't win when it comes to setting up the camera i know i go about it all the time but it drives me bananas um so uh, i will say though people coming to their own conclusions about pop culture can be problematic on some levels um, and it's usually when people really really miss the meaning of a piece of um, film or literature um, a really prime example of that would be uh, the matrix <laughs> um, another example of that would be fight club um, it seems that a certain kind of boy or man um, has will glom onto those type those pieces of media and wildly misinterpret them um, sometimes subtext gets missed and you need actual text because people don't necessarily know how to read it and it can cause problems it can lead to you know nasty pockets of the internet it can lead to people behaving um in really not very nice ways even in their you know in their real life with you know real life people so it you know but when it's coming to like making meaning for this in the purposes that we're talking about you know Hopefully it's fine, right? Um, so one of the things that he talks about, so I'm just looking down at my notes so I don't miss anything. One of the things that he talks about that you can do is a divination walk. So he says to go out into your local area if you're able to. Um, and if it's somewhere that you are able to actually go and walk about your neighbourhood, if not, possibly go somewhere where there is a trail space or open wild space that you can go and walk in. 
and he says to just sort of just set out and don't really think about which turning you're going to take which road you're going to cross so just sort of just go just sort of intuitively walk and just sort of see what you spot on the way right this is like various forms of divination where people are looking at you know um, the movement of birds or the types of birds or clouds that kind of thing right this is something that has a long history with humans have been doing reading meaning into all sorts of things in their day-to-day -day life for millennia literally for millennia and so um, he says that's why he wants you to have you know some cards or a number of cards with things that you would see in your day-to-day -day life on it because then if you do see those things on your walk you can come back you can pull those cards and then you can sort of like work out a reading from from what you've seen and what that meaning is um the other thing you said that's really good about creating your own meaning is that it constantly evolves right so things will suddenly not suddenly things may no longer be relevant in your life anymore and you can take that card out and new things will come into your life and the example that he gives is that the traffic light used to be something that was very relevant to him because he used to live in a city and he would get stuck in traffic quite a lot and now he lives somewhere very rural and he hardly ever encounters traffic at all unless he sees it in a film or on a tv show so that card that he used to have no longer relevant to him um, and I really like that um, and there was one thing that he said towards the end of the episode that he said he like if it feels meaningful then it is meaningful sorry Nomi has decided to you okay boo boo you can just about see her in the sunshine are you sunbathing yeah I'm filming a video yeah um so yeah I just thought that was really cool if it feels meaningful then it is meaningful very cool um so yeah and then i'm going to go on to Sorsha talking about how she layers meaning in her practice and in her magic so she talks about how she might be sewing something doing some stitch craft some like stitching magic and at the same time she might be rocking as some music play is playing and that music that she's playing might be some kind of folk music um, that is relevant to the work that she's doing and then she might be singing the words or saying the words or saying some kind of mantra so that's going into the stitchcraft the, the the you get that kinetic energy you get the that the verbal the, you get the words um you get the music and it's sort of it's layering meaning and then that could just be something that she's doing in an, in an individual piece but also sort of on a broader scale from like life where she's sort of playing instruments a type of music on a certain kind of traditional instrument that plays into sort of the way that she views the world i just think it's really really cool um, and it's something that i've also been thinking about a lot i think there's something in the water because i feel like that's there's a lot of this going around at the moment um but when we do magic we layer meaning right so stitchcraft is one way and using all those little elements that i was just mentioning but you know if you're doing a candle spell for example it is really well sometimes it is just a candle spell some people will take a certain color candle and light it and say a few words on a certain day that is specific to or relevant to the work that they're doing but usually there's more to that right so you're picking a candle for its color sometimes you will also pick a color for its shape right so we've already got two elements of meaning there we've got shape and we've got color um you might be using a plain pillar candle but then you could also inscribe um a sigil that has been you've created or that you found that will work towards or is relevant to the goal to the spell work that you're doing right so you've got another layer of meaning um, you might then dress it in a certain type of oil and roll it in a small amount of relevant herbs that are also relevant to the work that you're doing and then you could maybe you have a petition paper um, that you have folded up and you've put in beneath the candle holder 
whilst the candle burns and then usually when you are lighting the candle there will be some words or an incantation or something that goes along with that as well so again we've got all these layers we've got words we've got herbs we've got oils we've got color we've got shape we've got sigils we've got petitions excuse me um and it's all it's all just layering up and then you might it might be a working that you do over a number of days or number of weeks depending on what you're working towards whether you might be working through um a, a whole moon cycle with something right and you might be lighting the candle every day or every evening for a certain amount of time for a certain period and you're you're repeating those words and you you know it's sort of it's feeding that it's continuing it and it's building the layer and layering meaning and the more you repeat something right it's the more it sort of becomes ingrained and the stronger it can become um so yeah it's something that we work with all the time um when you think about the tarot these layers of meaning have quite often been put on top of the tarot so when you look at something like a visconti deck or a marseille deck you know they were they it started as a game right it and people ascribed started to ascribe meaning to it and use it for divination and fortune telling right or shadow work or personal development all the many things that you can use tarot for path working creative problem solving you know it's it's we've we've put a lot on top of it so obviously you have the golden dawn that came along and and put a lot of stuff on top of that which was building on previous work before that by other occultists um so you have you know you've got the the tree of life um uh, the um, uh, the uh, oh my goodness my brain the Kabbalah you've got that has been layered onto it you've got you know, astrology and color and um, alchemy and plant meanings and animal meanings and all sorts of things even when it comes to the open reading with Marseille you a lot of that is your you know you're looking you're making meaning by looking at again things like color you're looking at sort of lines and where they're flowing are they flowing up are they flowing down you're looking at where characters are facing are they facing towards each other are they facing away from each other um, those are going to be have two different sort of meanings um, not just you can obviously take the meaning the original sort of classic meaning of the card but when you take the context of the question and your own association and your own intuition you know those two ways of those cards looking at each other or not looking at each other again you're going to have a different conclusion or is one looking towards someone and that other person is looking away again that's another meaning are you know we have cards looking out towards you you know face on um and 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 Yov Bendov often talks about in in his book about how you know if people are looking a certain way it can mean that they're looking towards the past or they're looking towards the future um you know and looking outwards uh means something else they're looking at you as if in a, in a mirror is it in a mirror or is the not looking in a mirror is someone looking at you as if they're in your in front of you as a person not as you're looking in a mirror um so yeah i just i just we 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 utilize meaning and make meaning all the time as people that read tarot if you do indeed read tarot or if you read lenormand um again lenormand is a little bit more structured and isn't so much about the sort of open reading um as as tarot is it's a it's a much more sort of not a closed system that's not the right term it's more of a defined and definitive it has more it has more sort of set rules but it makes it sound like it's really stuffy and not fun where in fact it actually is really quite it can still be quite fluid and and, and it is lots of fun reading little more so so yeah i think it's just interesting how um we all as if as if you like i said if you read tarot yeah can have our own associations with those cards um another thing to think about with making meaning is dream interpretation right um i keep a dream journal admittedly very sporadically i can be very boom or bust with it i can go like 
for weeks without writing in it and then I'll write in it every morning for like days on end and then it'll be like once every other week or it's just I don't know I just seem to be really sporadic with it but I don't force myself I just try to just go with it it's usually I just forget honestly if I forget to actually put it right out flat on my side table for me to see in the morning then you know and then other times if I wake up in the morning sometimes I forget that it is I don't notice that it's there because I'm like blearily getting out of bed <laughs> but you know if I have a very particularly sort of profound dream or upsetting dream or if I just remember then I do I do try to write in it but dream interpretation is a funny thing right because you can get big books of dream meanings um, which I think is a really fun way to start or a good way to start if you're sort of feeling quite um, uh, unsure about how to go about interpreting your dreams but um, I the, the the most I think the, the you get the most out of it when you're sort of looking at what things mean to you I mean actually making your own dream journal would be quite cool as a dream dictionary why have I never thought of this it would have to be digital though because oh my god trying to like um you know <laughs> write in a book and then constantly adding things or index cards index card dream journal or digital dream journal would be quite good so yeah you could buy a book you could look at again with the cards that we were talking about earlier or that i was talking about earlier that the podcast podcaster recommends oh sorry I just noticed nomi has completely sausaged herself out in the sunshine she loves to be toasty and she is sun in her buns right now <laughs> um so yeah you can come up with societal meaning so you know red can mean danger red can mean um or red can mean stop red can mean passion right um so it, you know in some cultures red is unlucky in some cultures red is very lucky um so yeah i think another way to look for like dream interpretation or sort of divinatory meanings is to look at folklore especially your own local folklore um and if you can't find any local folklore at least folklore specific to your country at least right i'm sure you'll be able to find some specific to your country um and what a great way to like pull in meaning there might be things that you hadn't really thought of before but are sort of steeped in your sort of cultural heritage which i think um is really really cool so getting back to the between the worlds oracle um what i really like about this other than it's just such an interesting mix of items so you know you have things that you would definitely expect to see in a charm casting kit i mean i have a key in my own charm casting kit um so you've got you know you've got the key um and then you've got like i don't know this like tiny little i don't know if it's tiny but i imagine most of them are quite small because they have to be able to be thrown as lots devil head so i thought it would be fun to sort of read something and actually i think might as well just go with devil head seeing as that's the one that i've pulled and th thankfully they're numbered which makes finding them in the book really really easy which i've been very grateful for so devil head okay so it says mischief and mi and mayhem <laughs> um so what monica has in each um uh a section for each card each write-up for each card um is a little bit of a story i'm not going to read that i don't want to give away all of monica's work but she said i just want to talk about the read the bit about the item and where she um uh found it or the story about the item and what the messaging is for her so she says i found this little devil head made of clay i'll try and get to show you that so you can see made of clay in a shop in which the owner imports many things from Mexico. The playful yet unambiguous symbolism perfectly summarized mischief, thought-provoking activity, and sometimes manipulation. So the message is then, critical thought is required to ensure your actions are thought-provoking, not controlling. And then she gives like a, a, a much longer bit of information about an upright and a reversed meaning, which I won't read, but what I enjoyed about this 
reading the like intro to this book was that Monica's is like you know by all means use my meanings um that's you know that's cool i've provided them for you here but if you pull a card and you're getting your own meanings your own associations right she's like but use those so i think you know as i go along and i continue to use i haven't written any of my own in just yet oh no tell her did i pencil something i think i penciled something in i can't remember which card it was now i think it was one of the bones but she um says you know write your own in so i would probably if i can i would try to fit in um you know along the margins and pencil my own little keywords or meanings or stick in a post-it note and add that in with if there's no room because you know for example this is the final bit of information for this particular card which is the key incidentally <laughs> um that's the last bit so there's no room to write at the bottom where with the next um where was it but with the neck um, a couple of items along where she's talking about the thimble i love this has got like full color pictures in here as well um you actually have after the journal prompts there is a bit of space to actually write so i'd probably write if there's space in i'd probably write it down on afterwards if not maybe in the margins maybe on a poster anyway so sort of getting distracted that's by the pie i mustn't forget to drink my, my tea so um yeah again she talks about how um her collection was ever evolving and she's collected it over years and you know she's obviously picked out a small selection of these but it, it also made me think about my own charm casting kit which i've I, mean, I haven't played with as much as i'd like to recently um but i have all manner of it started off as just charms but it would it's definitely become more of a charms and curio oh my goodness curio casting set so here we have a compass um i've shown this before but you know i have you know a button so obviously not a charm um i have a small one of those little jingle bells i have a die so there's all sorts of things in here um i have a piece of stone from scotland this is a sort of glacial stone um i have an american penny uh you know and a thimble <laughs> there's a thimble in that deck um so these are all things that was oh, my key these are all things that um i've been sort of trying to work with and describe meaning to and i the reason i decided to make this video this morning was because actually i had got some new charms in from my shop and i wanted to add some of them to my um my selection of charms that I have here so one of them is this little mirror come on camera don't be a duck it's being a duck so that's a little vintage mirror which I think was quite cool self-reflection um, this moon phase which I thought would be an interesting uh, one to have um, what else did I add there was another one what did I add Oh, there's, so, there's quite a few in here now i can't i can't actually find them all but anyway so it's got it's got oh, there we go there's one of them there's the the uh, raven skull i added in um so you know i i, I it's this is something because at first i was like i have to have set meanings and i have to like um build it up and you know but actually if i find that i'm not enjoying a charm i can just take a charm out right i don't have to keep it in the set if i find like i've got a wolf charm but if i find a wolf charm that i like more i can switch the wolf charm out and keep the wolf meaning or maybe that particular wolf charm will bring something different into it because this you know this one is a wolf howling at the moon Maybe I could, would find a wolf sitting calmly. It would have a different meaning, right? I don't know. Not necessarily, but. So, yeah, I just thought that I, it's it just, yeah, layering meaning. Um, and we can make our own meaning, not just for divination, but for 
life in general and I just sort of was wondering how we do that and I think it's usually a combination maybe of our ethics and our morals and our beliefs and belief systems whether we have a religion or a spiritual practice um they we find meaning in the things that we find joy in um you know the the things that we pursue our hobbies or um, we can find meaning in the people around us whether that's our family our friends our community our colleagues um you know you can have some people feel that their life the meaning of their their raison de choix is is to be a healer and they are a doctor or um, a nurse or um, they do some kind of energy healing or they are a medical herbalist um, some people find meaning in um, raising a family and 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 caring for their family some people find meaning in service to others whether that is in a sort of formal role as a firefighter for example or um as a, a doctor or a surgeon um or as a charity worker working in local community um whether that is in a volunteering capacity or in a you know is in a professional employed capacity um so i think we can find meaning from all sorts of places right in all sorts of things and that can change over time mine certainly has you know i've definitely um move my mean my things mean different things to me as i've gotten older but also my you know beliefs and values have changed as i've gotten older and i think that's very very normal and natural and, and healthy i think if you have the exact same morals and views and uh values and um as you did when you were like 15 maybe i, I would define that quite strange i think it's quite natural for us to evolve and maybe a bit of a problem maybe a bit sort of being a bit sort of um stunted in the growth in that area maybe i mean there are things that i, st I there are things there are things that can remain constant uh, as meaningful so for me um, something that has always been meaningful for me is making art making things making crafts arts and crafts will forever be like i always say my meaning f f for me meaning in life is derived from being able to make and when i'm stuck in a situation where i'm struggling to make and i'm kind of in that phase at the moment i'm going through a real like a bit of creative block but also a bit of um like not being able to to for to doing new things making new things uh, for fun but also sort of trying to push myself creatively for work and then also just sort of I'm sort of physically strung a little bit with the issues that I'm having with my hand um, and it's been really it's been going on on and off since last May or June now so it's a real I'm trying I'm just trying to um, work through that you know um, what would it mean for me if I was unable to ever make things ever again I would have to find meaning in something else right um it would have to evolve because I would lose my that's the thing I feel like maybe I've all I've put all of my eggs in one basket on that front I mean I do obviously derive meaning from um caring for this little fuzzy bean um and um the life that I make with her and my spouse um I derive meaning from um you know spending time with uh the the land that i live on um so that then takes me to the last little bit before i wrap up this video which is how do you find meaning um do you believe that the universe has your back as the saying goes or do you believe that the universe is indifferent so when it comes to meaning do you feel like meaning comes from top down or do you feel meaning comes from bottom up or do you feel like you're somewhere in the middle um i'm very much a sort of um i feel like if a message was sent from above it would have to be relevant to something that is meaningful for you anyway otherwise the message would be lost you wouldn't receive the message right you wouldn't be able to discern it because you wouldn't pick up on it so there is an element of that i think for me i'm mostly in the camp that the universe is ultimately kind of indifferent 
to you as a person um and that meaning and um inter sort of meaning and um element of connectivity comes when you um join in conversation and in community um with the rest of the universe whether that is building connections with people with the people that you surround yourselves with um yeah it you know i it could be um mean uh spending time with animals or like i said the land that you live in with uh, nature or in we are nature you know i have a the the the, the separation between us and nature sort of bugs me because we are nature but that's a that's a different conversation um but like um you know the, like i talk about being in my local wild spaces and um talking to the plants uh watching the seasons as they sort of grow and go through their phases and they'll flower and then they'll have berries and all those sorts of things foraging and wild crafting that keeps me quite connected to that space and that's a very local thing um and that provides meaning um but then also um uh building relationship with spirits so again the genus loci the spirits of place the the spirits of your home uh you know it all sorts of things right your ancestors your spirit allies whatever if that is something that is important to you because um the i think mostly the the world doesn't necessarily give a shit about you because it's like people right if you're out and about during the day you know most people you see don't really care about you that you don't know them it depends where you live but i live in london which is you know it's a very busy city and it's very very full um and uh you know the number of people that know you and give a shit about you is very very small and it's because you have relationship with them right and they they have meaning and you have meaning for each other right um so a way to build that with the rest of the universe is to sort of or your environment is to go out and build that in relationship like i said with plants with animals with spirit allies with genus loci whatever um that's that's how that's what's important to me right that's how i see it um uh that's how i make or meaning or i'm trying to make meaning in sort of my day-to-day -day life as, aside from being a creative person someone who makes someone who creates um so i feel like i i think i have covered everything um do, 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 do. yeah i was just talking about like i don't my my views don't count I, it's all common I, uh, my views don't count on like an ever-present all-knowing being because i have this sort of very animist animistic sort of i believe in the overall aliveness and agency of the universe and so um I, yeah it's a it's a different vibe um to like monotheism or what have you um so yeah that's 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 all folks i think i think i've covered it all um but yeah let me know um how you ascribe meaning and that doesn't have to be the big like meaning in life but also like when it comes to divination do you have your own casting set i think that's what's really cool about creating your own charms and curio casting set or maybe you cast with bones and claws and teeth and hopefully ethically sourced um animal parts or stones or sticks things like that um you know that's what makes them cool or maybe you have a you live by the sea and you've gathered a selection of shells over the years and they all have their own meaning depending on how they fall and how close to other shells they fall and all that kind of thing it'd be you're making your own meaning right there there's there might be some basic rules or guidelines to creating that but then ultimately you're sort of going off your own understanding so yeah let me know if you cast with charms or curios um or what you think about meaning and all the layers that we've put on over tarot i mean i talk about i'm talking about meaning in tarot but for me i really enjoy very sort of stripped back um, types of reading if I'm doing very sort of down and dirty reading I really like that sort of stripped back Marseille style if I'm doing more sort of shadow work deep work thoughtful reflective work I tend to go for a more situational scenic kind of pip deck more smith weight or something sort of based around that but yeah let me know what you think I'm really um, interested to know and I want to thank you for joining me for this philosophical waffle um, I am enjoying these I'm hearing that other folks are really enjoying these so that's really good to know um, I'm gonna try and finish my tea because it's going cold 
But I really appreciate you. I've been really appreciating the conversations that are going on underneath these videos that I'm making. Um, yeah, it means a lot. So um, in the until the next time, uh, you take care of yourselves and uh, ciao. Thank you.